All right, as promised, it is now time to hear from Mr. Scott Cannon. Let's see what he has to say. Hello, Scott. Hello, humans. I am Scott Cannon, coming to you live on WLTH 1370 AM from the greatest city in all the world, Gary, Indiana, and this is the Counterpoint. Well, folks, the ball has dropped, the confetti has been swept away, and you're all back at work. A year that I was sure we'd have flying cars by. In the hustle and bustle of the holiday season where we all let our hair down and celebrated with family and friends, it's easy to overlook the story that fell just a little bit under the radar. You see, on December 30th, the day before New Year's Eve, we lost one of our great young voices in the leftist community, Erica Garner. Erica Garner was the daughter of Eric Garner, the man who, the man who, whose July 2014 death at the hands of the NYPD was videotaped and seen all over the world repeatedly, and whose final words were, I can't breathe, and became a rallying cry for all those who oppose police brutality. But for Erica Garner, Eric Garner wasn't just a political cause or a slogan printed on T-shirts worn by LeBron James and Beyonce. He was her dad. This woman had to watch the video of the man who gave her life being mercilessly strangled over and over and over while the man who was responsible, Daniel Pantaleo, was not only not punished but was given a promotion and now makes over $120,000 per year with the NYPD. For many, the cruelty of life in such a racist police state that took the life of your parent might be too much, but for Erica, it was the beginning of a new life. She became an outspoken activist against not only police brutality, but white supremacy in general. She called out political cowardice and hypocrisy, even when it was unpopular to do so. In 2016, she was invited by the network ABC to participate in President Barack Obama's town hall meeting about race relations. Instead of being given a platform to out her grievances about a system of racial inequality, Erica was seated in the audience and refused to give up, refused the opportunity to talk to the president. Ms. Garner was incensed, yelling about how she was used and railroaded by ABC on the two-year anniversary of her father's death as loud as she possibly could, screaming, a black person has to yell to be heard? Later, taking a Twitter to denounce the entire event as a sham set up by ABC and the White House to quell black anger. Eventually, her inability to sit down and be quiet finally got her an audience with Barack Obama, who basically did his best to placate and ignore her concerns like he did with black people. She bucked the trend of black women supporting Hillary Clinton and supported Bernie Sanders, gaining her much criticism and consternation from many in the black community along the way. She regularly appeared on Russia Today, in spite of the network being called a propaganda network by many in the United States government. In defense of her appearances on the network, she simply stated that RT News allowed her to tell the truth, unlike the mainstream American media, which tried to silence her. She also attacked popular liberal New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio for his unwillingness to do his part to seek justice for her father's death. It's no wonder that this woman and died from a heart attack caused by an enlarged heart at the age of 27 years old. Because it's obvious that she had more hearts than the rest of us put together. Erica Garner may be gone from this physical plane, but her spirit and search for justice will live on through me and everybody listening to this right now, as it is up to us to seek through what she got started. Okay, folks. You can chop it up with me on Twitter, at The Chemist Lives. The Chemist is spelled with a K as I am a product of the Gary Community School System. And we can talk about politics or music or sports. Or you can tell me how terrible I am at my job. Or you can listen to me every Monday from 6 to 8 on Issues and Answers with Jonathan Booz and the McGee Report brought to you by the precocious hostess with the mostest, Jamelia McGee. I am Scott Cannon, and that was a counterpoint on WLTH 1370 AM. God bless the working class. God bless labor. And I'm out. All right, Scott. Yes, yes. All right, so before you go, I just have to know, are you an Insidious fan? Who? Insidious, the movie. I haven't seen it. Really? No. 
Oh my goodness, you have to go see it because the <laughs> new one is coming out this Friday. Okay. So it's it's really. It, are you into scary movies? Uh, not particularly. Oh well, then don't go see it. <laughs> 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 no, don't go see it. But I don't know if you saw it, but over I know we're only in the third day of January, but a lot of celebrities have come out and, and they're stating that they're pregnant. Really? Yeah, a lot. We have so far we have we have Tia Murray and then we have um Who? Tia. Tia Murray. Yeah, Tia Tia Murray of Tia and Tamara. Oh the twin okay, I remember yeah. the twins, yeah. And then we have Evil Longoria. Oh, okay. The so Desperate know. Housewives. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, then know. we have, do you know America Ferreira? Uh, that name sounds familiar. She, what, what was she on? She actually, she started as a child star, and she was doing a lot for Disney Channel. I'm trying to think of something more relevant that she, I can't think of anything more relevant that she has done that you probably wouldn't know anything that's more modern. <laughs> but... She is pregnant too, apparently, and also um, uh, Paris Hilton got engaged. Somebody actually wants to <laughs> marry Paris I, Hilton. That's what I said. <laughs> but I see a billionaire. I guess. Look, I guess. Hey, look. Some people marry for love, and some people see a billionaire. Yes. Well, a billion dollars in the account, and say, "Hey, you, you should have saw the ring." So I don't know. 